Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 59. Today we are discussing the topic of converting fractions into decimals into percentage back and forth. Let's look at the very first problem. The very first problem we are being asked to convert. We're being asked to convert 5 8 into percent. 5 8 into percent and in decimal. Now 5 8, as you recall, or I hope you do, is some it has to do with 8. And on day number 32, on day number 32, we learned our quarters. Our quarters and our eighths. Learning, learning the eighths, knowing your eighths in their equivalent decimals and percentages is no different than knowing your quarters. Eighths are derived from the quarters. For example, here we have five eighths. Here we have five eighths, which we know is same as four eighths plus an eighth. A 4 8 is simply a half, which is simply 50%. So that part was easy. The question is, how much is an eighth? An eighth, an eighth we know is simply a half of a quarter. An eighth is simply a half of a quarter. If we know what quarter is in percentage, finding the eighth is no big deal. We just take a half of that. So we know, we know a quarter is simply 25%. And if we take a half of that, that's going to be our eighth. What is, what is half of 25%? Well, we know half of 24%. Half of 24% is 12%. 12 times 2 is 24. We don't have 24, we have 25. And therefore, the, the remaining one there, if you can break it into two halves, we're going to end up with 12.5%. And eight is simply 12 and a half percent. What I'm trying to make you understand is that don't memorize the bloody thing. Make the connection. Make the connection between the quarter and the eighths. Everybody knows that the one quarter is simply 25 percent. Well if one quarter is 25 percent you should be able to see right away that one eighth is simply half of a quarter and therefore an eighth should be half of 25 percent. Half of 24 percent is 12 percent therefore half of 25 percent should be simply Twelve and a half percent. That's what we have to add here. We already have four. We already have four eight. Four eight is fifty percent because four eight is simply half plus an eighth, which we just learned is twelve and a half percent. So it's fifty plus twelve and a half percent. We end up with sixty-two and a half percent. Sixty-two and a half percent, and that's our five eight. Five eight is simply sixty-two and a half percent. Which, if they ask us to express in decimal, it's going to be 0 0.625. 0 0.625, because a half is 0 0.5 percent, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0 0.125. 0 0.5 and 0.125. That's it. That's what that was it. Convert. The question was to convert 5 8 into its equivalent decimal and in percentage. We have done so. Let's let's move on to the next one. Next one is a very simple question. A very, sim a very simple question, a very silly question. The next question is to convert 3 tenth into percentage and decimal. Into percentage and decimal. Well, that's very silly as I said. 3 tenth is simply 0 .3, 0 0.3 or 30%. So that was, a, that was an easy one. We got lucky there. Let's do the next one, shall we? Let's do the next one. Next question is asking us to convert convert 55% into fraction. Convert 55% into fractions. Now whenever they're asking you to convert a, a, a percentage into a fraction or a decimal into a fraction, listen very carefully. Whenever the problem, whenever the question asks you whether you're preparing for SAT or SAT or TES or GMAT or GRE, these questions appear in these exams. 
Uh, whenever they ask you to convert a percentage into either a decimal, a decimal actually wouldn't, wouldn't matter what I'm about to say, into a fraction, always remember that they're looking for the most simplest fraction that you can find. It's a fraction in its most simplest form and its most reduced form. That's the only way you're going to be able to. That's the only way you're going to be able to match your answer against one of the answer choices that they give you. If you don't reduce your fraction, none of the answer choices will match. Do you understand? For example, here, 55 percent. We know 55 percent. Percent means percent simply means 55 over 100. But no answer choices will be in this form. You have to reduce it. 55 is a multiple of 5. 100 is a multiple of 5. So let's divide top and bottom by 5. If we divide top and bottom by 5. 5 has 1 5, another 5 has 1 5, so it's 11 over 10 has 2 5s and 0 has no 5s, so it's 11 over 20. The question was convert 55% into fraction. The answer is 55% converted into a most reduced fraction is 11 over 20. Let's do the next one, shall we? Let's do the next one. I'm going to put it on the blackboard so that you can pause the video and work on it while I'm taking care of my teeth. 237. Two hundred and thirty-seven over seven fifty into fraction. Do it yourself. Pause the video and do it yourself. I insist. Well, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to erase all of this thing. We don't need any of this anymore. Two hundred and thirty-seven over seven fifty. Well, the very first thing we should check before we do any work at all, whenever a fraction is given to us and we're being asked to convert this into a decimal or a percentage, the very first thing we must always check is to make sure that the fraction that is given to us, the fraction that we're starting out with, is itself in its most reduced form. Is this one in its most reduced form or can we reduce it a little bit more? Well, we have a 7 on the top, so obviously the top is not divisible by 2. The bottom is divisible by 2, but it doesn't matter. That's a moot point now. It doesn't matter. The, the fact that the bottom is uh, divisible by 2 is a moot point because the top is not. We'll, we'll come to this in a second. So since we cannot divide top and bottom by 2, let's check for 3, shall we? That's how we do it. Go systematically. Let's check for 3. And how do we check? How do we check if the number is divisible by 3? A number is divisible by 3 if the sum of the digits, if the sum 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 of its digits is divisible by 3. 237 is simply 2 plus 3 plus 7. 2 plus 3 plus 7 is 12. And 12 of course is divisible by 3. And so is 7 plus 5. 7 plus 5 is 12 as well. It's just a fluke that they both added 12 obviously. But the point here is that the both top and bottom are divisible by 3. We're going to divide both top and bottom by 3 and then we'll do our work. Do you understand? Let's do that here. Yeah? 237. Let's divide by 3. We could do it here immediately, but uh, just to make it easier for you to see, we can, I'm going to do it here and then do it here. How many 3's in a 2? How many 3's in a 2? Two? 2 has no 3's. 2 is too puny to have any 3's. 2 is too puny to have any 3's. So that power 2 goes and joins the 3, becomes 23. He gang, gangs up a 3, because 2 cannot take on 3 by himself. 2 is too puny, as I said. So 2 goes and joins the 3 and becomes 23. 23 happens to have 7 3's. 7 3's are 21. 7 3's are 21. The remaining 2 from the 23 goes and joins the 7, becomes 27. And 27 has 9 3's. And that will take care of the 3. Let's do the same thing here. 2, 2 has no 3's, 2 goes and joins the 3, becomes 23, 23 has 7 3's, 7 3's are 21, the remaining 2 goes and joins the 7, becomes 27, and 27 has 9 3's. Let's do the same thing at the bottom. 7 has, 7 has 2 3's, the remaining 1 goes and joins the 2 3's are 6, 2 3's are 6, the remaining 1 goes and joins the 5, becomes 15, and 15 has 5 3's. How many 3's does 0 have? Four zero has no trees. It's just a zero. So what we end up with, what we end up with is seventy nine over two fifty. Seventy nine over two fifty. 
Our job is to convert the bottom into a 100 as quickly as possible or some multiple of 100. If we cannot get a 100, some multiple of 100 would do just fine. We realize here that we have 250 here, just like we should see, just like we should be able to see that 25 times 4 is 100. If 25 times 4 is 100, then 2250, 20, if 20, rather, I meant to say 25. If 25 times 4 is 100, then 200 is 100, then 250 times 4 should be 1000. So let's multiply top and bottom by 4. And we end up with in the bottom 250 times 4, which is 1000. And on the top, we end up with 79 times 4. Let's do it here 79 times 4. We don't actually have to do it out here 79 times 4. We really don't, shouldn't have to do it out because we should realize that we know we, we should know your tables, which is why I made a very big first in the beginning of the series. This is our day 59. If you have watched the earlier series, you will you some people might be sitting there laughing at this guy teaching you how to multiply twos and how to multiply threes. There was a reason for it. You must know your timetables by heart. You must know your timetables 1 through 12 by heart. It's very important. And if you did know your timetables, you would know that 8 fours are 32. Would you agree? Would you agree that 8 fours are 32? Well, if 8 fours are 32, then you should also be able to see that 80 fours are 320. If you have 80 fours, that's 320. We do not have 80 fours, we only have 79 fours. A 79 four is going to be 4 less than 320. A 79 four is going to be 4 less than 320. It must be 316. Let's see what we can do here. 9 fours are 36. 6 carry 3. 7 fours are 28. 7 fours are 28. 28 plus 3 is 31. 316. What do you know? Exactly 4 less than 320. It's exactly 4 less than 320 because we do not have 80 fours. We only have 79 fours. 79 fours is going to be 4 less than 80 fours. Makes perfect sense. Anyway, it's 316. 316 divided by 1000 is simply, had it been 360 divided by 100, we would have moved the decimal places two spots. Here's our decimal right now. Had it been divided by 100, we, moved, we would have two spots. Since we are dividing it by 1000, we have to move it three spots. Ends up here. So you end up with 0 0.316. 0 0.316 is the final answer. And if you want that in percentage, this is the fraction form. If, they want, if, you, want, if you want that in percentage, then the same answer in percentage will simply be 31.6%. In fraction it is 0 0.316. 31.6%. Let's do the next one, shall we? Let's do the next one. So that was 237 divided by 2750. What was the next one? Convert 24 over 375, 24 over 375 into fraction and percentage. It's the same exact logic, same exact rationale, same exact method, nothing has changed. If you understood the previous problem, there is no reason why you should not be able to do this one on your own. Do it on your own, pause the video. 24, 24 over 375. 24 over 375. Our very first thing we notice is that 2 plus 4 is 6, 24 is divisible by 3, and 375 is simply 3 plus 7 plus 5, but we don't have to worry about 3, 3 of course is divisible by 3, and 7 plus 5 is 12, and 12 is divisible by 3, which means 375 is in fact divisible by 3. We can divide both top and bottom by 3, let's do that. But 24 has 8, 3, that was easy. 20, 24 has 8, 3. What about 375? Let's divide it by 3. How many 3's does 3 have? How many 3's does 3 have? 3 has 1, 3. How many 3's does 7 have? 7 has 2, 3's. 7 has 2, 3's. The remaining one goes and joins the 5, becomes 15, and 15 has 5, 3's. So 3 has 1, 3. 7 has 2, 3's. The remaining one goes towards the 5 becomes 15, 15 has 5 threes. So we end up with 800 and 100, 8, 8, 8 over 125. 8, 
over 125. We should be able to see right away now that 125, I hope you should, I, uh, I should say we should, we, we cannot obviously convert this into, well, I wonder if we, if we try to do 100. Let's do it two methods. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on a limb here. We're going to do two methods here. I'm going to do two methods here. 8 over 125. I don't know where it's going to take us. I don't know where we're going to take us. Let's see what happens. Multiply top and bottom by 100. Divide top and bottom by 25. This is going to become 5 and this is going to become 4. Okay, stay with me in this story. It's very important that you stay with me in this story. 8 over 5. 8 over 5 is simply 8 over, eight, 8 over 5. That's just 8 over 5. 8 over 5 can be written as 5 over 5 plus 3 over 5 times 4 over 100, which is 0 0.04. 5 over 5 is 1 and 3 over 5 is 0 0.6, which is 1.6 .6 times 0 0.04. Oh, what do you know? That was one way. Other way is this. Other way we could have done it is take 8 over 125 and multiply top and bottom by 8. But you, have to be able to, but you have to be able to see that 8 times 125 is exactly 1000. And if you do that, we end up with 64 on the top, 1000 on the bottom, 64, 64 over 100, 64 over 100 is 0 0.64, 64 over 1000 is going to be 0 0.064. It's going to be 0 0.064. Let's see what this gives us. 16 times 0 0.04. Let's do it here. This is this thing is not 16 rather 1.6 times 0 0.04. 1.6 times 0 0.04. Let's see what this gives us. 16 times 4 is 64. 16 times 4 is 64. The decimal is right here. This one has one decimal place, one, and this one has two decimal places, one and two, which means we need to move this decimal place three spots. One, two, and three. It comes here and we get a zero. We end up with point, point zero six four. Point zero six four is exactly what we have here. So whether you go this route, whether you go through this method or that method, of course it will take you to the same destination because the oh, math is math. It doesn't, the answer does not change depending on, your, depending on your method. So the bottom line is 24 divided by 375. 24 divided by 375 is 0 0.064 or 6.4 percent. If they were asking you in the percentage, then that's just going to be the answer choice. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.